just want to make sure that it's within that blade line. Place it down. Now, for this one, I'm looking for the little plates. So these are the same, thank you, these are the same clear plates and you could use those big ones, but I wanted small ones because it's much easier to make sure your edge stays straight, right? Because all you're going to look at is you're going to make sure that your paper is parallel to the edge of your die. You can see that. And you're going to actually stick your material in first. Most people would cut the other way, but when it grabs the die, it could shift your paper and then you're done. So by this way, you can stick your material through the machine, lay your edge down, you can still see that everything is straight before you get going, and that's why I wanted a short plate because I want to hold it right here. You're going to press that, and it's just going to cut the edge. So if you had a mini book, a chipboard book, it's going to cut a decorative edge for everything. Yep. So that's the edge dies. So then we'll go into texture fades. Texture fades are going to be embossed molds, basically, but they have a different kind of texture. It's a texture that fades in and out. So it's not necessarily a uniform texture. It's far more of grungy on it. For example, the wood grain. There's one, there's dots, and you can see the dots fade in and out on there. There's a shattered glass, there's bingo cards, there's all sorts of things. So let's do wood grain, for example. Wood grain, you can do this on just about anything. You can do this on paper, and that's how deep it'll emboss on paper. There's no ink on there. Or fabric. Nice. Yeah. <coughs> or if you have, um, let's just say, for example, this is. Um, Ooh, it's an acrylic. Yeah. This is this is the thick transparency. This is the clearly heavy. Okay. Yeah. The stuff from Hambly. The stuff that you know you obviously can't cut through, or if you try to use a regular embossing color, you just lose that. So this one we're going to go with the white platform too, because now we don't have a die. So this is just going to be our base. And it's always, you just remember every time you use a Sizzix machine, it's always two points. And you always want to put your stuff in the center of it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's straight or crooked, but it needs to be in the center. And then we're going to stack that up and make sure everything is good to go. Grunge board. If you ever try to emboss grunge board through a pedal bag and you're like, yeah. and if you let that handle go, it like spits it back out. Uh -huh. I broke my knot. You broke yours? Ah, uh, no, I broke two. They said I should. They said I should have broken it. I was like, oh, yeah. I just tried it. I just got my five-year-old granddaughter a pedal bag because the baby one. Yes. Yeah. Now let's see. Yeah. But the but the grown-up one, she can turn no problem. Yeah. No, I can't. Oh. I didn't have it straight. Sorry. Oh, it has reverse envelope. Yeah, well, because cool. if it, the cool thing about this machine, if it doesn't go in, it automatically reverses it and spits it back oh, out. Oh, that's cool. So mm. if you have the Big Shot Express and you know you have it. I bought the Big Shot, yeah. The Express, the motorized no, one? No, I didn't. Well, their motorized one, like, if it goes in and it stops, you, there's, like, a screwdriver to get it back out. Uh, this doesn't have that. Because yeah. I said, what happens if it gets stuck? It goes, it won't. I'm like, what happens? If it doesn't like it, it'll tell you. It'll give it right back to you.